2012. Dread. Now, first time I watched this movie, hated it, completely hated it. But then at the time, I was still in the same mindset that Slice to Alone had done Judge Dread. And it was a brilliant comic book version of Judge Dread. It had all the elements you want. This version, I keep forgetting the guy's name with stars on it. Um, I always get him mixed, I always get two guys mixed up. There's one, Schleven, Schleven, I don't know. Um, the, the guy who played the Transporter rebooted. And then you get the other guy who played, um, oh God, Dr. McCoy in their more recent Star Trek movies. For some reason I get those two mixed up. Anywho, it is a really good movie. It's more gothic art movie than just pure action. I mean, yeah, it does have the little woke aspect where you've got the black man having visions of raping the skinny white blonde. But aside from that, it's actually a pretty good movie. I've not seen it for about a year or two, so I'm due. Very arty. This is the reason why I didn't like it the first time I watched it, because I was watching it with the mentality of Judge Dredd, which was an action, bang, 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 bang kind of movie. This is more Tron Legacy type. You've got really good atmospheric music, good budget, good quality, and watching it on an HD TV with an HD copy is worth getting where you can see each individual droplet. It's it's not a smash you up action movie. There are scenes where it is a fuckload of action, graphic violence, but it is more of an art film than an action film. Carl Urban is the guy who stars in it. The only other people whose names I recognise is Lena Headley. Lena Headley? Lena Headley? I always get that name mixed up with a bloke from the 1970s who did comedy movies. With that Jewish guy. Um, I knew Sheriff Senegar, that sort of movie type stuff. Um, this is her, although people would generally recognise her as being blonde, skanky bitch from Game of Thrones. It's nice that the guys in the background, the average citizens, are wearing normal standard clothing that you would find in a shop today, as opposed to the comic book version with Sliced Alone, where they're all wearing futuristic type stuff. A nice little bit about, the way it's done is quite good. You have the artistic slow-mo, we're gonna do slow motion, we're gonna do the RT, the high definition over, and then, oh, woman pushing her power man. The skinned bodies start splatting on the ground. And the sound effect and the way they land is quite realistic. Because normally you get people trying to make things look more graphic and more gory and more noisy than they are in real life when it happens. And not with the human body, but with animals. I, I know what they sound like when they're dead, skinned, and they hit the ground when they still got flesh on them. And this is quite realistic. If you watch it as an RC gothic action movie, it's really, really good. If you're watching it for just a standalone action movie, it's shit. But having something like this, where they do the slow-mo with the explosion, and you see the ripples going through the guy's stomach, it's very well done. If you accept it's an art-type film, not a pure action-type film. It's not the first time I've watched a movie and hated it and then gone on to love it. And I do love this movie. I really do. It's a lot like um, the arty type movies. Tron Legacy, uh, not the remakes, Tron, uh, Tron Legacy, the um, Running Man, Running Man? Not Running Man. What's it called? Blade Runner. The Blade Runner sequel as well. Same thing. Couldn't stand both either of those films when I first saw them. But if you take away from the original, which is an action, sci-fi, and then view it as an independent movie on its own, an arty type movie, then they're, then they're great, they're brilliant. I mean, Tron Legacy 
and the soundtrack is amazing. And this movie, really good, really worth watching. Its value to me is because I can re-watch it. To me, a movie is not just something I can watch. It's something that I can reuse. I value things on how much I get value for money. It's a bit of a con because I don't pay for movies or TV series or porn. Does anybody? Apart from muggles? But the amount of my life I spend on it is how much value I get out of it. A meal. If a meal lasts for a few minutes, it ain't worth fuck all. If a meal lasts satisfyingly for a certain amount of time, it's worth it. If you can watch a movie again and again and again, it's got a high value, as opposed to a movie that you watch for two minutes, get pissed off and turn the fucker off and never want to see it again. Which is a bit like watching Nevermind the Buzzcocks. First few series, ten series, which is five years, excellent. Rest of it, racist, anti-white, woke, crap. Just constant paedophile jokes. This movie, brilliant.